Greetings and welcome to my tutorial on the DSP modifiers that are available in the Kurzweil PC3. This is going to be a three-part series and this is part one. I'm going to cover today the single block uh, modifiers that are available within the PC3. Okay, so uh, and, and go over some, some usage scenarios for those. So I'm going to set up my usual sort of program here. I'm going to put this at zero. Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to do something a little different with this one. I'm going to pick none for my key map. Okay, so this this doesn't make any sound right now, and uh, and I don't want it to. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up a source saw wave. Oh, let me go to my uh, amp env page. Let's put this to user. Okay, there we go. Excellent. Okay, let's get started. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is the first one in line here called wrap. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, listen to what rap sounds like, and then I'll describe a little bit about what it's actually doing. So we're going to turn this all the way down, 32. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to raise the pad coming into it. Okay, now listen as I hold down a key. So RAP is pretty cool because what it does is imagine you've got your waveform here on the screen and it looks kind of like this, like a sawtooth wave. And this is the center of the, of the waveform. So this is plus one, this is minus one. RAP moves the whole waveform up by applying what's called DC offset. It takes the top of the waveform and wraps it around so that that's now coming up on the, on the, on the bottom of the plot if, if this were a waveform plot. Uh, so extreme amounts of wrap are basically wrapping the waveform around and around and around multiple times. Um, and, and it's cool because at these extreme levels of wrap, you get these nice sort of 8-bit computer-ish sounding things, uh, which, which I like. Okay, so let's go on to the next one here, which is PW Mod. Okay, now PW Mod is uh, somewhat similar to wrap. Um, in that it applies a, a, DC, a DC offset to the signal, but uh, it sounds a little bit different. We'll start with PWM of 1. Now let me go back here to where it's 50. Right here. We basically turned our sawtooth wave into a square wave. So, so what's happening is PW mod again applies a DC offset. So if this is our plot of the waveform and this is my finger represents the middle of it, it's shifting the waveform up. But instead of wrapping the top of the waveform, it just chops the top off. Um, so it basically will take any input signal and add some squareiness to it, for lack of a better term, and make it look more like a square wave. So if you've got a, a sine wave or a sawtooth wave or, or, or whatever, what have you coming into this, you can make it sound more like a square wave. The cool thing is this can also work on samples, um, on key maps and, 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 uh, and other sound sources that, that, that you might be routing through uh, your instrument. And so uh, it can apply um, basically pulse width modulation to uh, all sorts of things, piano samples, guitars, whatever. And it's, it's kind of a cool way to get a different kind of a distortion sound or, or to change the tone of something. Okay, so let's go back here. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, gain. Gain is deceptive. It seems like it's a pretty simple thing, and it is. All it does is it adds gain to a signal, but let me show you some of the fun things that you can do with this. First of all, I'm going to turn the pad all the way down. Okay, and I'm going to start about here, minus 31 decibels, so not very interesting, right? So let me turn the volume down just a tad. Now let's go up. Now did you hear that? Gain is in some ways like um, pulse width modulation, but instead of uh, the, the, that block I just showed you, but instead of shifting the DC up, it's just making everything larger. And so your waveform will clip, but the, the, the fun thing is is that the PC3 will clip it before, uh, will clip it digitally before it gets to the outputs. And so you can apply large amounts of digital clipping with gain. Um, it can also be useful, for instance, let's put wrap right here. We just talked about that one. Okay, and now let's hear what happens when we uh, increase or decrease the gain. So let's start again at about... So you remember 
we controlled the amount of wrap uh, before by modifying wrap itself. But you can also control how much wrapping is happening with the gain control. And you can go all the way up to the point where basically you have like almost no signal. Um, so, so gain is a great way to sort of extend what the other blocks can do. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm going to set this back to none. Okay. So, next one in line is all-pass. All An all-pass filter, um, and, and to be honest, I'm, I'm still, I, I kind of get the concept, but it's a little shaky in my head. The all-pass filter essentially takes part of the waveform and shifts it in time. Uh, based on or, or shifts the phase of the waveform depending on the cutoff frequency. So if you have something that has a fair amount of harmonics in it, it'll take whatever, for instance, in this case, any part of the waveform that's above C4, and it's going to shift um, the phase of that by, uh, by 90 degrees. So let me pull down a key here, and let me scroll through the frequencies. Okay, so now that was kind of subtle. Let's put it all the way up. Let's take it all the way down. Let's put it somewhere in the middle here. So, uh, some, some people claim that with an all-pass filter you can't really hear its effect unless it's moving like this. And indeed, if you have, um, say for instance, if I had a saw wave and I had an all-pass filter and then I had a second saw wave that didn't have an all-pass filter applied to it, what you'd hear would be something that's very similar to the sound of, uh, I believe, phasing. And, but, 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 but the all-pass filter does have an audible effect on the sound. It also uh, is fun. For instance, let's take wrap again. Now, you remember what wrap did, how it wrapped around the waveform? Well, you can use an all-pass filter in conjunction with wrap to um, produce all sorts of fun little effects. So let me first of all turn down the wrap amount quite a bit here. Let me just go until it just starts kicking in, right about there. Now I'm going to scroll through the frequencies here of the all-pass filter. Okay, so, so you can see how the all-pass filter kind of in, in, introduces um, different, thing, different little twists, I guess you could say, to what the waveform is going to actually look like um, before it hits the wrap block. And then wrap does its own thing to the waveform. So you can really mangle stuff um, with a combination of all-pass and wrap. Okay, so let's set this back to none again, and let's go on. Okay, so we've been through those. Okay, low-pass. Low-pass is a simple six decibel per octave low-pass filter without any resonance. So um, it's not doesn't sound very fun, but the thing that low pass is really useful for is, for instance, if you have a piano sample, let's say, and you want to take just a bit off the top end, um, you can come in and you can roll it back a little bit to make your sound a little bit darker uh, without having to use a much larger filter. So if you want to conserve DSP resources, say you're doing a big multi-track session or something like that, low pass is good for just cutting out um, some of the higher, or, or toning down some of the higher frequencies uh, without having to use too many, uh, too many DSP resources. Okay, so high pass is very similar, only it works the opposite way. So we're gonna go up. And again, it would have similar uses where you want some filtering, but not a lot. You don't need any resonance, and uh, you want to conserve DSP resources because you're using a lot of voices at once or, or, or something like that. Uh, the other thing about high pass and low pass is they can be useful if you're trying to, say, for instance, emulate an oscillator from another synthesizer. Um, all of these blocks really are great for that kind of thing because they all introduce little inconsistencies and, and, and little things into the waveform when used in really small amounts. Um, in a later tutorial, I'll probably go over how to use this stuff uh, all together to emulate the oscillators from other synthesizers because you can do all sorts of fun things uh, with, with these blocks to introduce things that emulate stuff like, um, uh, 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 let's see, like like uh, 
discontinuities in the waveform because of the way the op amps are built inside an oscillator and, and all sorts of other things. Uh, so let's go ahead and move on. Okay, now we have Shaper. Um, if you've read anything on the internet, you probably know that Shaper is what's used in the PC3 for um, basically doing FM synthesis. So I'll let me hold down a key now. I'm going to start with zero with Shaper most of the way down, or Shaper mount most of the way down, and I'll let you hear what it sounds like. Okay. So at 1.0, you basically get a sine wave. And as I turn it down, at 7.5.0, you get a sine wave. At 5.0, you get a sine wave. At Two five zero, you get a sine wave, but they're all different. They're all uh, in different octaves. Basically, what Shaper is is Shaper is a sine wave table. Okay, so imagine you have your sawtooth wave, which looks like this. Okay, it starts at the top of the table and reads all the way through, and each sort of little index in the table is another part of a sine wave. So as it reads through, it's playing back that sine wave. So as you change the amount, you're changing essentially. Um, how quickly that table is being read back. Now you can also change it by lowering the pitch of the saw wave or raising the pitch of the saw wave. One of my favorite things about Shaper is that you can use it to add interesting elements. It's almost like another kind of additive synthesis when you're not necessarily using one of these um, amounts that results in a sine wave output. For instance, let's go about right here. So this 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 waveform is kind of a combination of a saw and um, a sine wave. And so you can get all sorts of interesting stuff out of it. And, and it just kind of depends on, on what you have before Shaper. Uh, for instance, let, let me pick a different waveform here, like triangle. Okay. Now see, that would be really good if you want to do like, say, like a, a pipe sound. By a pipe, I mean something that has a, sort of a column of air vibrating like a flute or something like that. Because you can, you can control sort of the harmonic content of, of the sound uh, with Shaper, uh, which, you know, in, in ways that you might not be able to do uh, using other kinds of synthesis. So Shaper really has many more uses besides just FM, although FM is the one that most people will generally use it for. Okay, so let's set this back to saw and let's move on. Okay, distortion. Um, let me turn it all the way down. Now let me start adding some. Now distortion and extreme amounts of gain are very similar to each other. Uh, the, the, the main thing about distortion is that I, I believe it essentially always applies a squared top to a waveform. Um, and, and so in, in in a lot of ways it can be used and gain can be used interchangeably if you're using large amounts of it. Let's pick a different waveform real quick here. Let's take a, like for instance a triangle wave. Okay. Yeah, so so that's what it sounds like. Um, uh, I think in many case, cases you're going to get kind of the same thing out of this if you use the gain block. Um, so you can kind of use them interchangeably. Okay, so now let's do a final one here. I believe it's treble. So let's go here. So what treble does is treble will boost or cut um, the treble part of your waveform. Now I can't remember exactly um, uh, where the cutoff is, but I believe it has built-in key scaling so that it will always um, follow along the keys and add, I think it's it's um, whatever the decibels is, that's how much it'll boost the top end of your sound. So uh, one, one fun thing about this is 
you can use it to brighten up a sound that might otherwise be kind of dark. If you've got a sample that needs a little bit of brightening, you can add a little bit of treble to it. Um, there are some other tricks as well that I'll go over when I start talking about key maps in the PC3 and, and how to use them creatively uh, in another video tutorial at some other time. But, but for now, just know that treble adds uh, treble frequencies. Okay, and that does it for this particular uh, installment. Part two, we will cover the uh, two block algorithms um, that work as modifiers. In part three, we'll do the three and four block uh, modifiers. Okay, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.